Welcome back, everyone, to Five Point War. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Five Point Four. That's work. Here in the second video, we just have two examples to go through. Unfortunately, they are difficult. So let's get to it. In this one here, we can see that we're pumping oil out of a cone. It's a right circular cone. It's inverted, has a height of 10 meters, base radius of 4 meters, and it's filled with this stuff weighing 30 pounds per cubic foot, height of 8 meters. So it's not filled all the way to the top, but nearly. So let's try to draw a picture of what on earth this looks like. So here we have our cone. It's 10 meters tall. 4 meters is our base radius. It's inverted, so it's this upside down looking thing. And we know that the oil is not filled all the way to the top, but it's filled to this height of 8. Uh, so actually, let me pull this 10 out here. So that'll be our 10. And then I'll put this 8 uh, in here. So this is 8 meters tall. And we want to know how much work would it take to pump all of this out. And so this is going to be an interesting force equation. This is what I was talking about at the beginning, is that it's difficult maybe to figure out what the force should be here. And so I'm going to write down an integral, and I'm going to try to start to include things that I think should relate to the force. So the first thing I want to write down is this 30 pounds per cubic foot, pounds per cubic foot. And I know my units at the end maybe should be something like foot pounds. So that's where I'm trying to head here. All right, another thing that may have to deal with the force, right, because I need to cancel out a lot of these feats. So one thing I could do is imagine slicing this into circles, right? A bunch of circles here, and I could try to figure out maybe what is the area of each one of these circles, and then lift that circle to the top of the tank. So it's going to be area, and that area is going to depend on where we are in this fluid, right? So it depends on y. So where we are vertically, up and down. Because the area is quite small at the base, and then it's, quite, it's bigger as we go up. Now, area is going to have units of square feet, as I just wrote. And then the other thing that I thought we should take into account is how far do we actually have to lift each one of these up? And that has something to do with distance, right? Because it's supposed to be force times distance. So here's my distance. Again, this depends on where we are and why. And now we can see all of these feet are going to cancel out. And then dy, this is going to have units of feet. And so if I do this correctly, my units will be foot-pounds. So this is how we know if we're doing something correct. Okay, so let me define my axes. I'm going to say y equals 0 is the bottom, y equals 8 is where the liquid stops, and y equals 10 is the top of the tank. Now this will help me determine where do I start and where do I stop pumping oil. So this is going to be from 0 to 8, right? Because that's where all the oil is, between 0 and 8. Okay, so let me go ahead and start rewriting this a little bit. Give my nice A of Y. And maybe the thing that I'll try to simplify here is I'm going to try to figure out my distance, right? And so you can see if I'm up here at 8, I only have to lift it 2 feet. If I'm down here at 6, I'd have to lift it 4 feet. Let me erase this. This is kind of overlapping here. If I was all the way at the bottom, I'd have to lift it 10 feet. So this is going to be 10 minus y is my claim. And you can see if I plug in 0, I get 10. If I plug in 8, I get 2, so on and so forth. So I claim this is the next easiest thing. After that, we have to figure out what is the area. And right, like I said, these are circles, and they depend on where we are in y. So I need to figure out what should the area of these things be. So in order to figure this out, we're going to need to remember some geometry and our good old friends, similar triangles. So I'm going to take a cross section of this. Okay, so this is my cone up here, but just a piece of it, nice cross section. So we have my 4 and my 10. And then I'm going to say this is any old uh, y here. And then there's going to be some radius, right, that corresponds to each y. And these y's range from 0 to 8. And now our goal is to solve for what that radius is, right? Because then if I know the radius, well, pi r squared is the area of a circle. So I can figure out the area. And similar triangles tell us that this r is to y as 4 is to 10. So look, these are the sides 
corresponding sides of these similar triangles. So I can solve this for r, 2 fifths y. And now that I can plug into an area formula. So area is supposed to be this pi r squared. So that's 2 fifths y squared. And now we can see I have it all set up in terms of y. I'm ready to integrate in terms of y. So now really the hard part has been done. I'm going to stop writing foot pounds at every single line. Uh, you don't need to do that. You just need to remember to put them at the very end. So let's factor out this 30 pi. I can simplify, right? If I square 2 fifths, it becomes 4 20 fifths. And if I square y, it becomes y squared. And now let's go ahead and factor out a little bit more and try to distribute a little bit here. So if I factor out this 4 20 fifths, things are going to cancel a little bit, and I'm going to get 24 fifths pi. And then if I distribute that y squared, I'm going to get 10y squared minus y cubed. And again, really we're in Calc 1 world here, right? Uh, the setup was really the new thing here in Calc 2. Now the actual evaluating of this integral, this is stuff that we've done before in Calc 1. So you notice though, I mean, cubing and taking the fourth power of eight is quite difficult. So typically when you're doing web work, quizzes, exams, things like that, this is kind of the final step here that I would expect you to write down to receive full credit. And again, the answer is foot-pounds. Now, if you had a calculator or a lot of time on your hands, uh, this does simplify down. You can check. And this becomes 16,384 pi over 5. And that's, again, units of foot-pounds. And if you had a calculator, you could uh, put this in there, and you can see that this will simplify and give you the approximation of 10,294 foot pounds. But again, uh, really that first highlighted answer there is what I would expect you to show on quizzes, exams, things like this. Okay, so we want to try to capture what we did up here, right? Because it was a lot of ad hoc stuff. So I'm going to define sigma as this density. This is common notation for density. Uh, dy is going to be the distance to where the liquid is being pumped. Ay is the area of the cross section of the liquid perpendicular to the y axis because all of these kind of need to be lifted the same amount. That's why it's a good idea uh, to take them like this. And the liquid exists between y equals a and y equals b. Then the claim is we get this work formula. And work is equal to this integral uh, from a to b, where the liquid exists, of sigma times area, which depends on y, times distance, which depends on y, times dy. And if you're careful with your units, this should do it for you. Okay, so let's try to utilize this to solve one more example for us. So again, we have an inverted cone. This one's a kind of right rectangular cone, height of eight meters, and the base is a four by four, so it's actually a square. So it's even even better rectangle. And it's filled with oil, this time weighing 20 newtons per cubic meter, and I want to find the work. And this is going to a spot three meters above the tank. So let's start writing down some stuff that we know. Sigma is 20 newtons per cubic meter. Our distance, right, it's going three meters above it. And that height is eight meters. And so let's actually define our axis really quick. Here's going to be y equals zero. And if it goes three meters above eight, well, it's going to, at y equals zero, it's going to be pumped 11 meters. And it's going to go down. Uh, one meter for each y that I go up. So that gives us the 11 minus y. And we stop pumping at 8 meters. So this tells us our range at which the oil lives. So that's saying that we need to start integrating uh, here at y equals 0 at the very bottom. And then we need to stop integrating at 8. Okay, one more thing to figure out, and that's area. And area in this case is going to be nice squares. So I'm going to draw these in cross sections, right? They're perpendicular to this y-axis. And let me take just a piece, again, a cross section of this cone here. And let's stare at it for a second. So we know that the cross section has height 8 meters. It's going to have the entire width of this thing is 4. And again, if I go up an arbitrary y, well, this is going to have some x value associated to it. And right, those x's, those are going to give me the area. 
So again, I'm going to use similar triangles. And I have that the x is to y as 4 is to 8. So I can solve this thing for x, right? Because if I square x, that's going to give me the area of this square. So area is going to be x squared, or another probably better way to write this is 1 fourth y squared. Because I'm trying to get everything in terms of y so I can integrate this. Now I'm finally ready to write down my work. So work is going to be from 0 to 8, and I'm just plugging this stuff in. 20, let's make sure our units work out, so I'll include units at this step. So let's see, area is going to be in square meters, and distance is going to be in meters, and then dy has another meters. And so we can see we have 3 meters on bottom, 3 meters on top, and our units will indeed be newton meters. So that's a great sign. And now we can see this 20 and this 1 fourth kind of cancel a little bit. They give 5. We'll factor that out. And again, now we're safely in Kelp 1 world, right? So we're just integrating. This is a relatively easy integral. So I'm going to distribute the y squared and then integrate this thing. That'll give me this 5 times, and this is going to be 11 thirds y cubed minus 1 fourth y to the fourth. And I'm evaluating from 0 to 8. Again, it's going to be difficult uh, raising 8 to the third power into the fourth power, so kind of I would expect you to at least get to this point writing this 11 thirds, 8 cubed, minus 1 fourth, 8 to the fourth, all times 5, and this is going to be, of course, Newton meters. Remember to include your units, very important. Uh, but again, if you had all the time in the world or a calculator or something like this, uh, you could simplify this down to 12,800 thirds, oops, 800 thirds, or this is the approximation 4,267, and again, those units are Newton meters. All right, and that is the end of 5.4 work. Go ahead and get started on your homework problems, and I'll catch you next time. See you then.